it's too late to call your dad and mother and let them know that Aaron got there, don't you think? Yeah, we'll let them know in the morning. Okay, you want me to start? Yeah, you start. Okay, well, it's uh, just after uh, midnight on Friday, uh, November 29th, and um, we're going to do a little more talking with Pa. Um, I guess maybe from when we started this earlier, there were some things that you thought about that you left out that you wanted to make sure to yeah, include. Yeah, I wanted to. Okay. I wanted to hear it. Okay, so you want to watch the other one first? Yeah, don't you think we should? Sure, it's about half an hour long. Well, that isn't bad. Okay. If I get sleepy, I'll say, let's go to sleep, that's all. Okay, sounds good. Um, before we uh, switch over to that, was there anything that, that uh, was outstanding in your mind about how you remember how what we talked about and how it went? Oh, no, yeah, a few, uh, a few things. Uh, very minor. It brought back some memories, though. Yeah, very minor. Uh huh. Yeah, I never heard about the uh, fighting Irish before. You and the other Irving Arnold. Well, you know, we used to be invited to uh, high school dances and things like that that mm -hmm. were thrown by various little clubs, and we were the only Jewish boys who were ever uh, were invited. Uh huh. And uh, so, did you tell people you were Irish? No. Oh, okay, no. they just called they, you fighting. They, they did that just to uh, aggravate us, I guess. Uh huh. Uh, we weren't running around together too much at that particular stage, but we were still running around together. Uh huh. And uh, I was taking out non-Jewish girls. Uh huh. Which there weren't that many Jews in uh, Indianapolis. Uh -huh. Well, you mentioned you had a stable of them earlier. Yeah. Well, had a few friends here and there, you know. Uh-huh. And, uh... How old were you when you first started getting with women? About 16. Uh-huh. 16, 17, something like that. Uh-huh. Well, I was a big guy for my age, and, uh, -huh. uh, I was always working, always had a few pieces of change in my pocket, you uh -huh. know? Uh-huh. So, uh, that's the way it was. Uh-huh. I had a, uh... I would say that I had a good teenage uh, span uh -huh. from 14 to 20 mm -hmm. uh, when the one thing that I do remember now very, very distinctly, I had a blind date with Grandma, you know, mm -hmm. that. you know what a blind date is, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a blind date with her. Now. Uh, Grandma's mother, Ann Tsai, the one whose birth site we have, your site we went to, right? Mm -hmm. uh, she had lost her husband when Grandma was six years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, I forgot what the hell I was going to bring out. It'll come back to me. Uh, Anyway, she, Hilda's mother, was a very good friend of my mother's cousin who uh -huh. was living in Indianapolis. And uh, Hilda came up to visit them. And uh, they asked me if I would take her out. Uh -huh. And uh, I said, well, if I have to, I would, but I didn't want to. Didn't want to have to go on blind dates. Was there any other woman you were seeing at the time that might have gotten jealous? Well, they might have got jealous. I was going with a uh, woman who was about three or four years older than I, maybe a little more than that. She was working in the dress department in uh, the fair store. And uh, I used to make a pass at her once in a while in a joking way. Mm -hmm. Then it became very, very serious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, uh, I'm trying to bring out, I have to bring out a point, I can't remember. It'll come back to me just like uh -huh. Union Carbide did. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, I took her out, and once I took one look at her, that was it. Uh -huh. she, she was something else. I can think of right 
Okay, we can watch some of the earlier stuff if you want, and I'll get a notepad and make notes if there's things that you want to bring up in the continuation, okay. and then I'll have some interview notes to go from. If you want to do that, go ahead and get yourself set up. Okay, one second. We'll go ahead and plug this in and watch uh, what we filmed earlier. I thought you did. I don't want to record. Oh, I'm not sure if I got it or not. Okay, so uh, it's about a quarter after 12, and we just watched uh, some of the uh, earlier stuff that we recorded. And, uh -huh. and um, what memory brings back another? Uh huh. So uh, you want to talk about? I don't know. You, you, I, I kind of think about you know like historical things from the twentieth century. You know, like a lot of times in these interviews they ask about. Oh, you I know, can give you. I can give you a, an opinion on some of that stuff. Uh huh. Uh, I remember I was about uh, well, somewhere between eight and ten years old. Mm-hmm. Is it recording? Yeah. Airplane overhead. Everybody on the street ran out of their house to see an airplane in the sky. Mm -hmm. They were just starting to fly then. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a very interesting thing. Uh, in, in this block, you know what I mean by square block, mm -hmm. only maybe two or three people had telephones. Mm -hmm. Telephone wasn't perfected, and it was very difficult to hear, and very difficult to handle because you didn't know what the hell you were doing with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I saw, I saw an evolution in my life. I think the 20th century, one of the greatest centuries of will ever been. Uh, first, the automobile. Mm -hmm. We saw the development of an automobile. Right. That if you would see them now, you wouldn't believe that those things could go, but they did. Then we had the telephone. And so many people didn't, couldn't afford it or didn't have it, didn't want it, were afraid of it. As far as dial, didn't dial, it was, yeah, it was dialing and not push button. Didn't they used to have... Uh where there was no dial and you had to talk to an operator and tell them who you wanted to call? If you couldn't get the line through, she'd say, sorry, sir, the line isn't through there. Uh -huh. It had to be completed. And they wanted to put everything underground so that it would be it would withstand the weather. Right. Condition. And uh, from the... From the... Uh, Bicycles, to the automobiles, to the horse and wagons. You could walk down the street and had to be careful where you walk because the horses didn't know they weren't in a private privy. Right. Uh, so I saw, and I'm, I'm talking to Mr. Number one is I. This five touched everybody in that generation, in that in that era. I remember my mother's father, my grandfather, Jacob Mendelssohn, who was a very upstanding person. He was an educator, and his wife, my mother's mother, my grandmother was an educator. And when I go to Cleveland and I go out to Lansing, I go out there and visit them, visit their graves. And I have an awful lot of respect for them because they were very respectable people. So you remember them from when you were little? Did they? Not my grandmother because uh -huh. my mother did not get married until after her mother died. Right. But, get this, I was born in 1913. 
The United States entered the war in 1915 or 1916. I don't have that figure right at my fingertips. And we won the war, and the war, the armistice was signed in 1918, so I was five years old. And I remember very, very distinctly my mother's father, my grandpa Mendelssohn, taking my older brother Henry, my older sister Jeanette, and I, Howard wasn't born yet, taking us downtown on November the 11th, 1918, that was the signing of the peace agreement at the end of the World War. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was, now that I mentioned it, when I was uh, nine or ten years old, Warren G. Harding was elected president in 1922. And I remember selling extra newspapers that night, running up and down the street, yelling, extra, extra, Warren G. Harding gets elected. Very, sounds like a piece of corny stuff, but it actually happened. I can see myself right now. I know where, remember where we lived. And, uh, uh, so tell me, tell me about where you live. What uh, you, you mentioned it was a block. Was it uh, apartment buildings? No, 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 no. We lived in houses. After all, we had my dad, my mother, and the three of us children. And then Howard was four, and Adeline was five. So what was the house like? If you walked up to the house, well, it was a wood, wood frame house, mm -hmm. constructed of wood. Had three or four bedrooms on the second floor had a first floor and had a full basement. Had indoor plumbing? Oh yes, oh yes. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of homes at that particular time that didn't have it, right. but we only rented, we never owned, we always rented houses where we had the bathrooms inside. Okay, so if you walk into the front of the house, when you walk in the house, what, what would you see when you walk well, in? The first thing you do is walk into a living room, just like you walk into this apartment. Mm -hmm. Live into, you walk into a living room. Right. Then we had a dining room. Okay, let's let's look at the living room. What would you? What kind of furniture would you see? What sort of that everything was, on the walls? That was that particular stage of life for all everybody that they were making certain things, certain uh, uh, furniture. And everybody bought it on a uh, installment basis. They didn't have credit like they had today, but they had installments. Uh, I don't exactly remember what my dad paid for some of this stuff. Do you remember if there were if there was art on the walls or if there pictures, were art or any pictures on the walls? The walls were just plain, or you don't remember? Just just plain. We used to hang a family picture up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, okay, so you had the, you had and a... we had a piano. Okay, you had and a piano. My pian sister was taking piano lessons. She became a, uh, uh, an accompanist for a lot of concert guys that came through Indianapolis that needed somebody to play the piano for them. My sister did that. She was very good. She also taught music, but she couldn't teach me because we just couldn't sit there and talk to each other civilly. So the piano was in the living room? Yeah. All right, and you had a dining room? Yeah. And did the family all eat in the dining room? We used to have our dinner in the dining room. The kitchen was for the breakfast or lunch. Right. Okay. And uh, uh, did your mom have two sets of dishes? Yeah. We had two sets of dishes, two sets of silverware. So it was always either milk meals or meat meals. Yeah, what? More for the... Uh, Passover holiday. Oh, so it was regular dishes and Passover dishes. Yeah, well, she used to uh -huh. used to pour boiling hot water on the dishes, and that changed them from uh, uh, regular to pesadic. In other words, the real hot water washed all the sins off the the uh, flatware. And uh, so yeah, there's minor, minor details, and we don't get into those details. In right. Well, I was just thinking about. I started thinking about their kitchen, and that reminded me of 
a story I remember you telling me long ago of when you were a little baby, and the reason you have a mustache, you, you can take it from here? Yeah, well, I, when I was born, uh, I was, guess I was about a year and a half old. I was already walking, and I had a bad case of double pneumonia, and I had a case of measles at the same time. Now, for measles, you kept the house dark, lights off, and warm. For pneumonia, they wanted all the light they can get and uh, keep you on the cool side. So it was a toss-up. And being as sick as I was, I forgot how to walk. My dad and mother had a big wood-burning stove, iron stove in the kitchen. And they wanted me to walk again and I wouldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. One day my dad got on one side of the room, my mother got on the other side of the room. My dad said to start saying, come on little baby, come on, come on to grandpa, come on to daddy. And instead of walking over to my dad, I ran over to my dad. And I ran right into the stove and cut my whole lip. And they rushed me to the doctor, and he sewed it up. And I've got a scar right there. But you don't actually remember that. That's just a story that they told you? Well, they, they told me, because right. I always asked, why did I have right. such a mark on my lip? Right. And uh, you can't see anything in there now. No, of course not. <coughs> so as soon as you were able to grow a mustache, you, you grew it, and you've kept it ever since. Yeah, I was about 16 or 17. It wasn't much of a mustache, but it I was self-conscious of it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. We talked about your house as far as the way it looked from the outside and the front uh, yeah. living room and kitchen and dining room. And upstairs you said there were four bedrooms. Yeah. And uh, Well, the three boys, Henry Irving and Howard, shared one bedroom. Mm hmm Jeanette and Adeline shared another bedroom. Right. My dad and mother had their own bedroom. Right. And there was always an extra bedroom, and we you get company or this or that or the other, we always used it. Right. Um, hmm. so, so Families, families stuck together. Families were uh, more cohesive. If that's a proper word, and I think it is, to be together to make the family stronger. They were important to each other. So, uh, did your family have a radio, and would you all get together and listen we, to the radio? We finally got a radio. When I was pretty young, we had radio, and uh, we had, uh, I never got a television set until after I was married. So we were right. Years. right. But uh, what, were there any radio shows you remember listening to? Oh, yeah, we every night. What were, what were some well, of those? Well, what happened here, let me think. I'd come home from carrying my newspaper around. My brother Henry had a job downtown. He'd come home from that job. To, he, uh, Jeanette would help my mother in the kitchen. Adeline was just a little baby. Uh, my dad would walk into the house. The table was set. The meal was ready. He would clean up, wash up. We would all wash up. We'd sit down, and my dad would start serving. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a little uh, regimented. And, uh, of course, we'd, we'd get, us kids would always get in a fight. And uh, they'd have to stop us. I'd get slapped around a little bit. So, <laughs> did My you... My dad didn't hesitate to uh, use his hands. Say that. Was but, there ever anything that you did that you remember that got him particularly upset or... So, not, not, not one so, any little item, no. Right. 
Um, so we we were talking about the radio shows with He's the whole thing recording now. Yeah, would the whole family get together and listen to shows together? Or there were certain after, shows after that after dinner, my dad would walk into the living room and read the newspaper. Okay. Then I would walk in there and I'd start clinking on the piano. Till he'd tell me to stop that noise, go up on the third floor if you want to play. You should take my little banjo and go up on the third floor and play. Because I love jazz. And I knew jazz. And I could play jazz. And boy, if they would have given me lessons then, I could have, I might have gone someplace. I don't know. Was jazz considered... Uh, culturally incorrect music at that time? Yes, yes, yes. So, because that's what they thought, Henry and I, Jeanette, used to play, and Howard, used to play Jewish music, or Russian music that my mother used to sing. My mother had a very lovely voice. After dinner, she would sit there and sing, and I'd try to get the notes and play with the left hand and the right hand. And first thing you know, our own little our own little entertainment center right there. Mm -hmm. and it was a very warm feeling. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, when did you get your banjo? I was 13 years old. And I earned some enough money. I had five or six dollars with me. I got on a, a trolley and streetcar, and went down to uh, South Indiana. I forget the name of the street. It's on the south side, and it was a Negro section. And you know, uh, in Indianapolis, we had the Negro section, the Jewish section, the Italian section, and there was no mixing, and nobody crossed the lines. I mean, they all uh, lived in these sections like this. And uh, I went down to Indiana Avenue. And I was walking along. There were pawn shops. I saw a banjo in the window. I didn't know how to tune a banjo. didn't know how to play a banjo. didn't know what the hell it was for. But I walked into this store. I said, how much are you asking for that banjo? It was seven or eight dollars, something like that. I said, I only got five. He says, I'll take it. Came home. We lived in this three-story house. The attic was empty up upstairs there. My dad said, where'd you get that? And I told him about buying it. And he was a little angry. I spent five dollars for a banjo. Was he angry that you went to that Neighborhood? No, not that. He, he was just angry that I spent the money. Mm -hmm. Five dollars was a lot of money. Five dollars is like a hundred dollars today. Right. Sugar was two cents a pound. Was it a Jewish guy who was running the pawn shop? A loaf of bread was less than five cents a pre of a loaf. Uh huh. Do you remember? Do you remember the guy at the pawn shop? I don't remember the guy at the pawn oh, shop. Okay. Jewish fellow. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's what I figured. Um, so. I got, took that banjo and I went upstairs. How the hell am I going to tune it? I didn't know which way to tune it. Mm -hmm. But I started fiddling around with it, fiddling around with it, fiddling around with it until my dad would yell upstairs from way downstairs, Turn that damn thing off! Uh -huh. And uh, that's how I learned how to play the banjo. Do you remember any of the songs you used to oh, uh, like playing on no, it? No, no. Long time ago. Well, I remember that you know at your 40th birthday, I have you doing uh, ukulele Ike. Oh, that's. Uh, my 40th birthday. Yeah. I don't remember that. Oh well, I'll I'll make you a copy of that to listen to in the car. I'd like to hear my voice. Uh huh. But that okay. generally was the way we lived. Uh, do you remember? Let's let's get back to the the radio. I'm just curious if if the family would get together and listen to radio shows, or if there were certain shows that certain members of the family liked, and that that would be the yeah, time that they listened. Yeah. To. What do you remember? 
What? What? Well, Mrs. Goldberg. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to. It was a, it was a radio. And, uh, she talked with a heavy accent, and everybody loved her. She was very popular. Uh, didn't know too much about. Her. I wasn't. I wasn't around my house that much. I had to be out looking for money. Mm -hmm. Here, work there. I got a job working at the uh, Jewish Community Center, handing out towels for the guys after they get through playing, ba playing basketball up on the second floor of the gym. They'd come downstairs, and take a shower, and change clothes, and go. They used to take a get a big shower towel for a nickel. I used to turn that into the office. Talk about that. And uh, did you ever go out to the movies? You ever go out to where? The movies? On Saturday, on Saturday, if I earned it for a nickel or a dime, buy a box of cheese crackers and go to the movies at 1 o'clock and stay there till 4 or 5 o'clock, then rush out and deliver my papers. Were there any movies that you remember? No, no, not really. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, there may be people who remember better than me. I, well, you remember a lot. You know, it's um, I'm. You, there's a lot of things. You know, like you said before, one I'm thing reminds you of another. Rates, that's all. Yeah, one thing reminds you of another, and I think it's important to just you know whichever way. Uh, your your thinking goes go with it. Um, well, from my mother, I love the Jewish religion because I used to get the stories from her. And, uh, my mother, my mother's family was very 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 sharp people. Do you remember uh, uh, any sort of interest in in Palestine or Zionism, uh, as far as your family donating Zion, money? Zionism didn't mean a thing to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what Zionism was because nobody in my family really knew that much about it. Zionism Zionism was just coming out of its shell. Right. At that time, see. And uh, <coughs> uh, Israel, but they call it Palestine at that time. It wasn't Israel. Palestine was unreachable for the average person. It used to take uh, seven to ten days to take a boat over to Palestine. Now it takes four hours, five hours. Uh, so, did your family, you think, would you say that your family was Jewish in Many a ways. cultural, in addition to a religious sense, in a cultural sense? The family was, was, was too Jewish, and Jewish in a very, very cultural way. And uh, I couldn't get bar mitzvah because I, we talked about that, I think. Yes, we did. But I did get uh, confirmed. Do you want some water? Yeah, I'd like some water. Let me get you some. Um, this one's mine. I'll get you some milk. thing I want to say, mm -hmm. 
thirsty. That talking, you know, all that talking, it's good to make sure you keep your throat moist. People would have heard my story. They'd say, yeah, there's a million stories like that. They may be right. Some people may express it differently than I, but I'm giving it to you the low-down, common way. You know what I'm saying? I had certain goals. I didn't realize that I had goals, but I did have goals. I wanted to have, at that time, the Bills Brothers, uh, Bing Crosby, Perry Como, they were coming out of their shells in 1930. The Depression was on. Things were getting tough. The world was in a war. And people had different goals that they wanted to attain. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to be an engineer. The crazy thing is that I wanted to be an engineer. I didn't, I didn't know what an engineer did, but I liked the sound of it. And as it is, I turned out to be an engineer. So you have goals, you had goals that you wanted to attain. And maybe some were fortunate and could do it. Like I knew some guys, their fathers had good jobs or they had good businesses. And... Uh, these guys didn't have to work for their money. And they were able to get things easily. Everything came hard for me because I was trying to help my folks at home with money and other things, I guess. I never really complained until after I got married. <laughs> no, because I wanted to do something for my wife and child. And, uh, I guess I did it, but it came hard. I don't know. I was just wondering after when you were saying that. Yeah, I, I just I've wondered this before, so I might as well ask it. Have you ever thought that that the way that my brothers and I grew up that that we had it easy? Uh, say that again. You said that you know that 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 things came hard for you. Did you ever? How, did you ever have a feeling about my brothers and I that 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 you know we had it all just handed to us growing up in Beechwood that that. Uh, I never thought of it. Uh huh. had a different feeling to you guys and to my son. The fact that I produced a son, and I did produce a son, I wasn't going to let him have to do a lot of this bullshit that I did. And he didn't do it. You know, he got out of college and he walked right into Arnold the Equipment and uh, Arnold Robin and Lunt. And uh, he was uh, an officer of the company, vice president of the company. When Nate was going to college, I made him vice president of the company and put him on a payroll. So that would help pay his college fees. I never had anything like that. If I earned $10, I kept $2 for myself and gave 8 to my mother. Not because I wanted to. Yeah, I wanted to, but I had to. What do you do? You would have done the same thing, I'm sure. Of course, remember one thing. There's a flow. There's Harry and there's Irving. There's Till and there's Hilda. And that flows into a, this just my own way of thinking. It flows into a, a hopper that gathers all of this knowledge and experience and things like that, 
and it goes down, and you take off from there. You know what a V blender is? You can, you can almost figure it like a V blender. Right. right. Well, that's I mean that's how okay. genetics works. Mm -hmm. So Harry, there's some of Harry's family, I presume, in, in, <coughs> they made a contribution to you to your well-being. You ever feel that they did or didn't or what? Oh, sure. Yeah, I, um, you know, that, that family tree that my dad got for uh, my mom's family is fascinating, and I've been emailing with the guy who put it together. Let's put that right over here because we know, don't have it in front of the lens. Um, so... You feel that uh, much the same for you as well that you're a, you're a product of your four grandparents. What's that? It, it, the the other end of what you're saying was that you are the product of your four grandparents. Yeah. And uh, don't you think so? Sure. That's can that's you see a flow between your dad and me? Absolutely. Do you feel there's a flow between your dad and yourself? Certainly. Yes. Um, I find that, yeah, that... Uh, he's got a goal. He doesn't realize that he's got a goal, but he's got a goal. Oh, sure he does. I, I think he does. And, uh, you know, it just happens to be born that way. Uh, this fellow Bob Weiss, stockbroker, friend of your dad, they both came out of college, and I'll guarantee you Nate is just as sharp and as smart as Robert Weiss, and Robert Weiss is just as sharp as, as Nate Arnold. But it's the luck of the draw. Now Bob Weiss, his uncle, his mother's brother, had this firm. Shuffle Rosenmeyer, my stockbroker. And Bob needed a job. He got out of college. His uncle gave him a job. He's head of the company now. Why didn't Irving Arnold get that? To the draws, that's all. So there's a lot of a lot of hard work involved. There's a lot of luck involved. And you got to. No matter what you plan of this and that and the other, your family's got to contribute a little bit to it, and this one contributes a little bit to it, and then it all comes down into the hopper and down and mixes up, and then you start the next match. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to do it. It's got to be you. Mm -hmm. Do you ever stop thinking about that? Sure. And what'd you do? Come on. What you do about it? What I do about it? I'm I'm living my life as best I can to be the best person I can be, and well, that's that's what I do about it. I, I try to live a good life and do the right thing. Okay, but I'm trying to give you an idea of what what it all what it's all about. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of the other. You mix it all together, and you got Seth Arnold. This conversation makes you stop and think a little bit. Sure. See, when you were growing up, you had that house at Mayfield Heights, right around the corner from where I lived. And you had your own bicycle, you had your own car. I didn't have such a thing. I did, I had it more or less do it in a sneaky way. But it didn't turn out too bad. I was very, very fortunate. My mother, my wife. I think 
think every man should have the experiences that they could that I had or maybe that I'm told across the way had. He went to temple at night and he saw men and women sitting there. And if every man and woman there stood up and you asked these questions that you've been asking and trying to get them to express themselves, you'd find some real interesting stories there, I'm sure. And then your mind has to sift them out which ones you want to follow, A, B, or C. Well, I think I think your story is an interesting one, and I'm I, I enjoy going, well, you know, hearing about it from you. I don't know how. I don't know how interesting it's going to be. That's good. Um, I know that my dad wants to continue with some more. He wants to ask you about uh, different aunts and uh, uncles. Do you remember any aunts, uncles, cousins? Of, I guess Irving Arnold was your first cousin. Well, yeah, I remember. I remember we were uh, we spent some time together, but uh, he's not a very warm guy. Uh -huh. Well, let's just say in general, as far as your, the brothers and sisters of your parents, uh, what they were like or what their children were like, or if you remember all the family getting together. Well, you know, it's very, very strange that you should say that. I have a nephew. My sister Jeanette has a son. I had a son, Billy Pearl, 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 William Pearlman. father died when he was a couple months old, and so uh, my sister remarried and married Stuart Friedman. Stuart Friedman brought this boy up, did a terrible job, and boy, he was, all he was doing was traveling from one end of the country to the other end of the country. Could not find himself. Then he met a woman, in, a gal in Kansas, who straightened him out. She had the money straightened him out, helped him finish his college education, and he just resigned as uh, head of the psychology department for the state of, uh, for the college of uh, South Carolina. Big job, brilliant man, has written several books. My nephew. Well, you said, you said Stuart did a terrible job of bringing him up. It sounds like he turned out okay. He did turn out, but, but only because he left home. Mm -hmm. Did it on his own. Mm -hmm. What about, do you remember uh, any of, uh, did your, your mom or dad have any brothers who lived in the, brothers or sisters who lived in the same town as you? Do you have any uncles or aunts? My dad had eight brothers. And did they all live in town, or? They both of them lived in Cleveland. We lived in Indianapolis. So you remember meeting them or their children? Knew them all. Mm -hmm. Knew them all. When I was 14 years old. The other Irving and I went to, we hopped a ride and went to Cleveland from Indianapolis. Spent a couple weeks here on our own. Went, went from one uncle to the uh, next. A couple weeks when you were 14? Yeah. Did your mom know about that? Yeah, raised a lot of hell. Uh-huh. But, uh, hey, I wasn't the best kid in the world. Was this during the school year, or? Oh, I don't remember. No, it was during the summer. Oh, okay. But, uh, I should have been out working, and I was out fooling around. Mm-hmm. I like to be a mean little kid. Uh huh. Did you ever get arrested? Huh? Were you ever arrested or any trouble with the police? No. No. Yeah, I had no problem. Uh huh. Um. So I'm I'm thinking more about uh, some of your your aunts and uncles or cousins. Well, my mother, my mother had uh, three sisters and a brother, Morris Mendelssohn. He was 
one of the greatest guys I ever met. I love that man. And he liked me. And uh, he and I got along great. Got along great. He used to love when I pick up my guitar and start playing. He used to, he knew. And uh, music was very prevalent in our lives. We were good. We played on radio. Were you were doing were you doing jazz or oh, no, Jewish Russian music? music. Yeah, Russian, Russian, Russian music. program, fifteen minute Russian program uh -huh. on radio. That was the year I met Grandma. My and brother Henry was the leader, and he and Howard played mandolins. Jeanette played the piano, and I played the guitar. And they needed a guitar player, and they either did things my way or I wouldn't play. Mm -hmm. In fact, one night in the middle of a broadcast, I walked out. Hmm. Got Why? Got angry with my older brother. Do you remember what, what you got angry about? No, I don't. But uh, They didn't want to do it your way. He, uh, that, that's another story. My brother, older, my older brother, he's not living anymore. Which brother is that? Henry? Yeah. You uh -huh. know he doesn't re he, was he around when you I met him at your 65th birthday not no, not 65th 60th birthday or 55th there was a there was a big party that we had at executive caterers yeah I don't remember and he was in town for that that's the only time I ever met him oh well, he married a non-jewish girl so we were not very close so you felt that he, for you it was okay to date non-jewish women but it upset you that he married a non-Jewish woman. Well, that was his business, as you know. What am I going to do? Well, uh, was that... How old were you when he uh, married her? How old when he... How old was I or yeah, he? Yeah, how old were you? Do you remember? Or how old was he? Well, let's see. Married her after I was after I was married. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, I had been married two or three years when he got married. And we and didn't know that he got married. I was going to ask if he had a regular wedding ceremony or if he did it in private. Never know when he got mm -hmm. married, who married him, or what. Uh -huh. I mean, the preacher or a rabbi or. Hurt so, my mother, hurt my mother very much. Mm -hmm. her, one of her sons, one of her children, she married a non-Jewish girl. But, but, uh, and I can't blame her. I felt that way too at that time. And so were you the first of your brothers and sisters to get married? No, Jeanette was And uh, how did Uncle Sid get along with the rest of the family when they first got together? Sidney? Yeah. Sidney was a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Sidney was just a nice guy. Mm -hmm. And he had a tough time making a living. So I'd help him out once in a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came from a very nice family. And eventually he found his niche in the real estate business, and he did well with it. He had two daughters, and they both married well. And, uh, they live here. One of them lives very near uh, where Amy lives, Shirley Sork. I never see her from one year to the next. They were going to keep in touch with me after Adeline passed away this past year. They were going to keep in touch with me and we'll keep together, keep together. But they don't do it so easily. I'm getting sleepy. Okay. Um, did you want to, as long as, so real quickly, as long as, uh, or, or we can pick this up tomorrow, as far as you talked about um, 
Howard marrying, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Henry marrying Anne and uh, Jeanette and, uh, and um, Stuart. Stuart, and you, you talked about, uh, right, Stuart and the guy she was married to before, and you also talked about Adeline and Sid. Um, you want to mention anything about Howard and Jean? Uh, no. As far as what what it was like when they first got together, anything you remember about well, what? I, I was living in Cleveland. They were living in, in uh, Akron. Okay. I didn't get to see much of them. He never cared much for me. I'm the kind of guy I like to say what I have to say and uh, then I go on to something else. I don't want to dwell on it. They had two daughters. I don't know what happened to them. They had two daughters? I remember Suzanne was one daughter. She's the youngest, and Linda. Yeah, I don't really Little remember. Uh-huh. She married a she married, real nice guy. He was a uh, medical man. He was a doctor. He worked in experiments. Mm-hmm. Michael not Michael, but uh, I can't think of his first name. His name was Klein. Okay, well. I'm trying to think of his name. I liked him. Real nice, nice young man. Mm-hmm. But they got divorced. Mm-hmm. Did they have kids? Yeah, they got two daughters. Uh huh. I wouldn't know if I saw them. So actually, we got, I mean, out of, we had, uh, with you and your brothers and sisters, there were, there were three brothers and two sisters. Yeah. Um, and out of the three brothers, uh, only one had a son to carry on the family name. Yeah. Which was Nate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I got, uh, I got the two boys, the grandparents grandchildren out in the field carry on the line mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure Nate's not going to have any more but you might have I might and Andrew might have he might John may have one more I don't know he might so the line still goes on mm-hmm that's my job to keep the line in line and, and, and grow. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we can pick this up again tomorrow if you want. Okay, I'm getting sleepy now. Well, All right, you're probably going to sleep good tonight. I hope so. All right, so we'll uh, cut it off and we'll uh, start again tomorrow. All right. Sleep well. Okay. Got it back together.